welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, it's all about this year's 35th annual August Moon Festival here in Quincy. It's coming up next weekend. We will learn all about it from folks from Quincy Asian Resources. But first, we check out the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, partly sunny out there at 76 degrees. That's about how today will shape up a mix of sun and clouds with temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. The humidity has been blown on out of here. Nice comfortable night tonight. Partly cloudy lows tonight drop off into the lower 60s and a pretty nice weekend coming up. More clouds than sun tomorrow. Still comfortable though with highs only in the low 70s. I think Sunday is the better of the two days with increasing sunshine. Mild temperatures around 80 degrees and more of the same on Monday. Mix of sun and clouds at a high about 80. Looks like a chance for some rain by the middle of next week. But until then, we have partly sunny skies and again 76 degrees here in Quincy right now. As we check news for you today, there's going to be a delay in the construction of that new Richard de Cristofaro Special Education Learning Center here in Quincy. Mayor Thomas Koch says that a combination of factors, including the pandemic and the size of that project, have pushed the timetable back. Well, they've, they've been doing the um, remediation in the building, so there's, uh, and, and again, we're dealing with some of the, uh, the shortfalls in the, in the supply chain and the, the long lead time on windows mm. and various pieces of the building. So it's, it's challenging, but, uh, you know, all hands on deck, it's, it's happening. I mean, if you've driven by, it's been gutted out, and there's a lot of work going on inside, so... Um, it's going to take longer than we had anticipated because of what we're dealing with in the general economy. But overall, it's a good team down there, and, and uh, we're very excited about the project. The school people are so excited, uh, particularly the families that have uh, little ones that we, we bus out for some of these programs that to keep them in the community. Um, they're, they're really thrilled. And City purchased that building on Old Colony Avenue from Eastern Nazarene College for $6.8 million, and the City Council approved an additional $16 million for the renovations. The mayor says he believes there is sufficient funding to complete the project, but would not commit to an opening date. Initially, Koch had hoped to open that new center in the fall of 2023. 100 to 150 special needs students from pre-kindergarten through eighth grade will be housed at that new learning center. The mayor estimates the city will save at least $350,000 in the first year by keeping special needs students in the city. Now, police continue to investigate Tuesday night's triple stabbing outside of the Residence Inn in Braintree. Three men were stabbed during a confrontation between two groups in the parking lot just after 11 p.m. Braintree police have just released the initial 911 call from that incident. 911, the signs recorded. Where is your emergency? Yeah, the Residence Inn in Braintree. All right, what's going on at the Residence Inn? We got a guy looks like he's been severely stabbed sitting in the yeah, lobby. I'm stabbing. All right, hang on one second. Correct. Can I get the closest unit to the residence in? Callers reporting a stabbing victim in the lobby. Stand by for further. Okay, were you involved in it, sir? I, I was not. He just strolled in asking for help. All right, so he's in the residence in lobby. Is uh, is he alone? Did you see anybody else with him? Yeah, he had a couple friends with him. He's got a towel over the wound right now. Looks like he's got multiple stab wounds. All right, we got units heading that way. One victim does remain in critical condition today. A second is in stable condition. The third was released from the hospital. State police say the suspects and victims are from out of state and may have known each other. Police say they were staying at the hotel for employment reasons. Anybody with any information is asked to report it to police. Local Pulitzer Prize winning author and historian David McCullough has died. McCullough died this past Sunday at his home in Hingham. He was 89. McCullough, of course, best known for his book, John Adams, that was turned into a hugely successful HBO miniseries and reignited interest in the Adams family here in Quincy. Speaking at the dedication of the Hancock Adams Common and Quincy Center back in 2018, McCullough said Adams can be credited for many of the rights and freedoms that we enjoy today. It's been 20 years since I wrote my biography of John Adams, but I am still finding, and in particular, you know, incredible stories such as I'm writing now, how great his influence and the influence of those his contemporaries has been in our country. 
And we must never forget that. We think of the Puritans as people who all wore black clothing and never wanted to have any fun and didn't want anybody else to have any fun. That's not true, they were human beings. They wore colorful clothes, they liked to sing, dance, have a little drink once in a while. They were human beings. But they had these high ideals. And the reason there's so much education in this part of our country, for as it has been for, for so long, educational opportunities, is because of that ethic. Thank God for them. And um, we commonly hear people say, oh, gone but not forgotten. I think the saying should be, if they're not forgotten, they're not gone. Yeah. On we go. Now in a statement, Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch said McCullough was an inspiration for the creation of the Hancock-Adams Common and the recently announced plans to create the Adams Presidential Center. The mayor said McCullough helped pave a path for Quincy and that he's a big part of the story of the city. He also says he does want to create some type of memorial for McCullough here in Quincy. Well, a summertime staple in Quincy is the Recreation Department's annual Arts and Crafts display and competition at City Hall Plaza, and this summer is no exception. 18 projects created by participants at all 15 playground locations were on display recently, where over 1,300 ballots were cast for this year's contest. Now, after the two-day exhibit, there was a tie for first place. This one here, Surf Shack from the Lebrec Playground, and also Stranger Things from the Wollaston Playground, both tied for first. Second place went to the Snoopy Dog House, created by Kincaid Playground, and Faxon Playgrounds, where the Wild Things Are TP finished a close third. The Quincy Recreation Department Director Michelle Hanley thanked all of the participants and leaders for their contributions, and to the many local businesses that donated prizes for this year's winners. The first Dunkin' Donuts marked a historic milestone in Quincy this past week. The original shop on the Southern Artery held a grand reopening ceremony on Wednesday after undergoing some recent renovations that added modern amenities such as a cold beverage station but kept classic features too including the counter seating. Hundreds of people including Quincy Mayor Thomas Cope, local councilors and state lawmakers all participated in the celebration with owners Victor and Octavio Carvalho. The Duncan Joy and Childhood Foundation donated $5,000 to Interfaith Social Services of Quincy and 100 customers also won free coffee for a year. William Rosenberg opened the first Dunkin' Donuts in 1950. It was first called the Open Kettle. There are now over 12,000 locations in 40 countries around the world. That's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we get all the details about the upcoming August Moon Festival here in Quincy. That's next. Hi there. We're back. Uh, kind of appropriate we're talking about the August Moon Festival uh, today because tonight actually is the full sturgeon moon and the last super moon of 2022. So it's all about August Moon with the folks in Quincy Asian Resources. Please welcome Philip Chong, Rocky Chan, Tina Ho. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you. Hey, thank How you are you? Too. Yeah, great. Good. Thanks thank for you so much for having us. Oh, it's a pleasure as always. Yeah. 35th annual this year, Philip. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. How did that happen? I'm 32 years old. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You started when you were two. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. A child prodigy. Yes. So it's been an honor to have the opportunity to host the uh, surgery event for the city of Quincy uh, for the month of August. And this has been long-standing cultural events uh, celebrating the city diversity and, you know, also continue the tradition uh, for the for our custom. So we're very honored, uh, very excited. It mm -hmm. has come a long way, the August Moon Festival, since it first started um, 35 years ago. Exactly. Yeah, very so modest beginnings. Yes. So, uh, yeah. 
Nights are now what? The, probably the premier August Moon Festival in the Northeast, would you say? Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, we're very lucky. We're uh, chosen or selected as a best uh, street festival, uh, best of Boston in 2018. Yes. And um, but it's been you know with all the support from our volunteers, uh, from all the vendors, from the city of Quincy, from our team, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. our board. Um, so and the more important is the patrons. Yes. Um, you know, thousands of patrons coming in, you know, accessing and just um, celebrating for the day. Well, not only has this festival uh, grown by leaps and bounds, but mm -hmm. so has Quincy Asian Resources grown by leaps and bounds and is continuing to grow even today. Yes, yes. So uh, our growth really stem in, in terms of um, the spirit of the city of Quincy. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we know there's a um, tremendous need, uh, especially during the pandemic. Uh, for the underserved uh, immigrant, Asian, um, and then you know, with the last few years with the uh, with the refugee situation. Yes. So mm -hmm. uh, we just all hands on deck um, as a city uh, always do. Um, we just providing continue providing services um, for our social services, food security, youth, mental health, and all those type of stuff. Yeah. Well. Generations now have gone through the services that Quincy Asian Resources has provided. I mean, really, you, you know, people who came to you as new immigrants, maybe as a teenager, now have families of their own. Yes. So we have um, multi generations right. family that have received and continue to um, um, get our services and programs. So. Um, it's uh, it's very rewarding mm. to to seeing the smiles and stuff like that. I bet. And uh, for example, like Rocky, when he first started at Corey, he was uh, our ESOL teacher, mm -hmm. and just walking by every night, seeing him, how he engaging with uh, the student, full of the student, and how uh, how much they enjoy, right. you know, um, the program, and then you know the interaction. So. It mu Rocky, it must be a pleasure as a teacher um, to have a student that is eager to learn, you know, and, and is committed to improving themselves um, yeah. and, and moving forward through that education. Yeah, and, and to be able to see some of the ASL students and um, <coughs> the youth grow up through Quarry, right. uh, through the different programs, and then come back to volunteer to give back, either helping out with the festival or um, giving back to the youth department, um, referring their friends who need services yes. back to the FNCS department, the outreach department, to get the help that they need. So it is really rewarding to see that we're able to touch so many lives um, holistically. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Tina, what are your responsibilities at Quarry? So um, my, uh, actually my role is the integrated service lead of family and community service at Corey. So I oversee and manage the family and community service. We do a lot like uh, intensive referrals uh, for the clients, for the new immigrants. And then we also like do a lot of like uh, community outreach. Mm -hmm. We do translation interpretation. So that's why we partner with City of Quincy to, you know, um, start the, co the first cohort in the spring. And then we make sure like uh, the communications, you know, is translated in their languages, yes. for example, like Chinese, Vietnamese, Spanish, Portuguese, you know, to those like uh, the residents in community, they are underserved, they are actually, they have the access, but sometimes like they don't know the language, yeah. you know, there is a language big, like a barrier. So uh, between the number one barrier, I bet. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, and between like the city and also the uh, their community, but that's why, like, what um, Corey does is, you know, being like a liaison between mm -hmm. uh, both of them and make sure, like, the message delivered to the community. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you bring up an interesting point, too. Although yeah. it's called Quincy Asian Resources, you serve all communities. Actually, uh, yeah, we serve, yeah. yeah, we serve all the immigrants um, who need help. Um, yeah. So, Philip, has that meant you've had to bring folks with multiple ethnic backgrounds <coughs> on board, <coughs> Corey? Yeah. Yep. Yes, we have. Uh, we have colleagues um, that Portu speak Portuguese, okay. Vietnamese, 
uh, we are Spanish, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. of course Chinese. Sure. So yeah, just just little languages. But yeah. even within the Chinese language, there are oh, yeah. variations, right? Yes. Uh, yes. I know of only two, Mandarin and Cantonese, yes. but I'm sure there are others. Yes, yeah. there's Thai Chinese and stuff like that. So there's all different dialects in China. So mm -hmm. uh, with those nuances that we can provide, and it just really. Uh, kind of like bring them home, yes. that feelings. Yes. So yeah. uh, that high touch, we always want to making sure that we provide to, to the communities. And of course, more importantly, it's also giving them a pathway to learn English because uh, it is something that, like what Tina and Rocky is saying, is an empowerment. Right. Language is an empowerment. So uh, for them, learning English can empower them. So it's an efficacy work. You would remain stuck. <laughs> Right uh, where you are, unless you had the opportunity to know what opportunities there are yes. to pursue. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and also the other thing is really giving the perspective of yeah. immigrants. Yes, because many times that uh, n not willing to change that feelings mm. is is all about mental and perception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we we play the role that as as a coach, as a buddy, as a you know uh, go to place. Mm to give them a sense of perspective eventually. It's true. Um, so one of the things that, as I mentioned earlier, mental health is extremely, extremely important to us. And we are in the process of getting a uh, full, fully licensed outpatient um, program uh, to provide bilingual mental health services wow. to the community. So those are the things that we want to do, continue yeah. to pushing, because if we can help someone to have a cl uh, clarity on things, it's not focusing on what they don't have, it's leveraging what they have. Mm -hmm. So it's really tied to that name of our organization, uh, Resources. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, it's ingenious for our founding board members to come up with a name looking back. Um, so they, they do have the vision and insight in terms of the needs and how can we help to promote that. Yeah, it's, I go back to the old saying, it's not a handout, it's a hand up. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, it's, yes, It's definitely. reaching out and lifting yes. folks up and letting them explore and, and make their own way. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Part of that is having fun. <laughs> <laughs> like at the August Moon Festival. It's all about the fun. It's yes. yes, 35th annual this year. It's yeah. coming up uh, next Sunday, actually August 21st, uh, noon to 4 p.m. You're taking over Coddington Street. <laughs> we are taking over. So all the people, everybody is, is coming, enjoying the day. So uh, there's a lot of uh, cultural performances, mm. lion dragon dance. We're rock climbing. It's a great day to celebrate in family with free ice cream. Uh, not just for the kids, for adults. Of course. Wrong, right? <laughs> so Everybody's a kid when it comes to ice cream. Right? Oh, yes. <laughs> we want to thank uh, Dairy Queen, ah. uh, our, one of our board members. We call him Uncle Dave. <laughs> uh, providing free ice cream to the community. Thank you, Dave. Yes, yeah. yes, and uh, so so much more. So arts and crafts for the kids. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, Rocky, let's uh, switch over to you and uh, tell me some of the highlights. Uh, some of the things that you enjoy most about August Moon. Uh, the highlights would be seeing the community, not just Quincy, but South Shore yeah. and all around New England, come to our festival mm -hmm. uh, to feel at home if they're uh, from an AAPI background uh, because it's such a big holiday mm. um, <coughs> in the Asian countries. Uh, another thing is seeing all of the vendors, the youth volunteers, the staff, just uh, coordinating and having fun interacting with the festival goers. Um, and also uh, to have the different performances which uh, we have um, invited local groups to come and perform uh, covers uh, or to uh, perform some of their traditional cultural dances. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, martial arts demonstrations are usually part of this, is, is that this year as well? Uh, that I'm not sure. I know we have, we will have Tai Chi. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some traditional uh, dance mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, hip hop and K-pop. Uh, dance group. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're f you're leaving out the most important one, though, Rocky. The lion dance. No, the dunk tank. Oh. <laughs> oh the dunk tank. <laughs> yeah. This year we are uh, adding to one of the activities outside of the bouncy house yes. and the rock climbing is a dunk tank. So the dunk tank will be located in the arts and crafts section, and people who come can have an opportunity to try and dunk me. <laughs> In the nice cool water, <laughs> or, dunk, or dunk people that they want to dunk. Yeah, or okay. dunk. Oh, can some you other nominate people. someone to be dunked? Is that? 
<laughs> I, I, I'm working on I it. I see someone. <laughs> I, I'm working on it because uh, our festival is from noon uh, with yeah. a kickoff with um, the opening lion dance, yes. and dragon dance, yes. uh, and the uh, uh, Pledge of Allegiance oh, you know, okay. with the flag, and then having the honor, you know, the guests of honor to speak. Uh, and Philip kicking it off officially, mm -hmm. and then till four o'clock. So mm -hmm. I will be in that tank for about three and a half hours. Okay, I All will right. be looking for volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, <laughs> me? <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. You heard it here from <laughs> first, folks. <laughs> uh, Tina, yeah. what's some of your favorite uh, things about August Moon? So my favorite things, of course, like here we have the moon cake yes. here. Yes. See, you're going to feed so, us. So yes, <laughs> um, actually, like every year in during the August Moon, um, August Moon Festival, it just like for the all the family get get to get they get together, reunion, have the food, yeah. um, and then we have um, and then we play like a paper la lantern, and then we also have uh, like a moon cake. Actually, when we so as you see like the moon cake, like we cut it half, and you can see the egg yolk. And actually, that is represent like the moon. So it means like moon for us is like we get all the family members, the friends get you reunion, we get mm -hmm. together. So it's a great time to us to celebrate this festival. Like a harvest festival, right? You're giving thanks uh, for the bounty that yes. you've experienced yeah. over the mm -hmm. past year. Yeah. It's yeah. very similar to how we celebrate Thanksgiving. Yeah. Because yes. uh, here in the U.S., we celebrate Thanksgiving for the bounty of the harvest. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same for China uh, and all the other Asian countries. They celebrate it in August and September because we follow the lunar calendar. Yes. And um, it is a time for family to come together. Back when it was an agricultural society, mm -hmm. they would gather together to help um, collect the fruits and, and reap Mm -hmm. the fields of all of mm -hmm. their hard work during the spring and summer and when they're done they would celebrate it's an official holiday in china as well as vietnam and the other countries oh, okay mm -hmm. uh, in china for example it's a three-day holiday so um this year's is september 10th oh and that means from the 10th to the 13th families will be traveling uh, together to either see families or to uh, have reunions with family and friends and the moon cake is yes. the Tell epitome the of, of, yeah. of, of the gift to bring when you oh, visit. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's a hostess gift. It's a hostess gift. Okay. It started uh, in the ancient Near East, like ancient China, really? about mm -hmm. 1000 BC. Uh, it started off as a, a cake specifically made for royalty, the royal court, um, academia. Mm. Uh, but when the dynasties have officially like designated the August moon or mid-autumn festival, they um, started making these cakes as a way to celebrate and to share with friends. So okay. if you are in China or Korea or Vietnam uh, during this time and you were visiting your boss or your co-worker family, you would bring a moon cake for them. Okay, and mm -hmm. we're looking at a double moon cake here, right? This is a two yolk? Two yolk. Yep. Two yeah. yolk. Two, two, uh, so two there yolk. are, tell me about the different <coughs> varieties. I didn't realize there were so many different kinds. Yeah. So uh, I was only exposed to the double yolk or when I was a kid, the no yolk moon cake uh, because I come, my family comes from Hong Kong. But if you're from northern China, for example, it may be, you might find uh, the ingredients would be more savory mm. instead of sweet. Okay. Yep. Um, I know vi in Vietnam they have uh, mixed nuts mm. uh, instead of just uh, lotus seed paste and uh, yolk. Um, so it depends. Even in China, there's at least five different wow. traditional, you know, ingredients. Okay. And will there be mooncakes at the August Moon? Festival. Yes. Of course. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Philip, you're going to bake them all, is that right? I did one year. Yes, I <laughs> <laughs> you did do a video demonstration. How did they come out? Because we couldn't yeah. taste them. It was, it was challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it was challenging. You tried yeah. it earlier. I did, I did, did sample like it. it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, this well, is the sweet version. It, okay. It's, it's yep. um, yeah. got a, um, like a peanut buttery taste that I, I sensed. PPNJ. Yeah. Yes. But uh, mm. very rich. 
Very, okay. very rich, yeah. Okay. So just, just a little sliver will fill you up. Okay, it's all yours. Thank you very much. <laughs> the, the staff thanks yes. you as well. Thank you. <laughs> um, so again, uh, Tina, let me ask you about the logistics of August Moon. Uh, how to get there, where do I park, yes. what, do, what do I have to pay? So um, this is like a free entry free. For, okay. free for everyone, any like Charles, um, family, seniors, they all come together. So this is a great um, event um, happening on August like a 12th. Um, 21st. 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 Yes. Sunday, August yes. 21st. Sunday, August 21st. Yes. And then from 12 to 4 p.m. And then this is also like a subway, um, Quincy Center. You can get off Quincy Center yep. and then walk to the Cardinal Street. Um, and then also there we provide like a free parking. So if you drive there, so you can park in the South Shore of YMCA mm -hmm. and also uh, the Quincy High School. Oh, okay. Very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. And we're praying for good weather, but I'm, I'm sure uh, Mother I'm Nature will shine on you. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> nice 80-degree um, yeah. day for the dunk tank, Rocky. Yeah. Very rarely yeah. have uh, we've not had bad weather. Right. Okay, knock on wood. Knocking on all okay. kinds of wood. Very yes. rare. Yes. All right. Anything else we should let folks know about right now? Think we hit it all? We are very excited. Yeah. It's an honor. So yes. um, thank you so much for everyone supporting this. And okay. thank you for your team. Happy August moon. Thank Happy you. August thank moon. you. Happy summer. Thank you. Yes. Check the forecast for you. Speaking of the weather for the rest of the day today, kind of what you see is what you get out there. A mix of sun and clouds. Pretty comfortable. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Nice sleeping weather tonight. Finally open the windows down to the lower 60s. And that holds true really right through the weekend. Tomorrow there'll be a mix of sun and clouds. Again, lower 70s. So a little bit cool fall like. And a warmer on Sunday with more sunshine. And uh, right around 80 with clouds and sun on Monday. Thanks again to Philip Chong, Rocky Chan, Tina Ho for joining us today from Quincy Asian Resources for the August Moon Festival. Thank you. Thank thank you thanks to our us. crew and thank you for watching. We are off next week. Join us again on Monday, August 22nd. Rick Doan from Interfaith Social Services will be our guest. Meantime, check out our website anytime, qatv.org. There's all kinds of news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and lots more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.